Okay, Mohammed Al Khadra, such a pleasure to have you back on our program. How does it feel speaking to you now that you are living in the U.S.? Oh, it, it feels way more differently. Thank you first for having me again. Um, it's it's a it's like a, being a new person, like you're born again with the gift of freedom. So uh, I don't know if you can tell, but my I smile more. Uh, from 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 coming from a place where where you you don't have that much opportunity you don't have that much uh, ways you can expand your mind and discuss it with people and to be able to now exchange ideas and do whatever do whatever you actually think of and express it it just changes your whole mentality yeah, I mean, in, in your speech at the Freedom From Religion uh, Foundation conference, you talked about drinking water during Ramadan. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about that. Yeah, I was at the, uh, really close to the Texas State Capitol, and uh, it was the first day of Ramadan. So I had this bottle of water, and it's hot in Texas. So I'm opening this bottle, I drink a little bit of water, and then it hit me that, uh, wait a minute, like 25 years of my life have passed and I cannot do this like and I'm doing it right now and usually there would be somebody who wants to get violent there you should like if the police see you you're gonna go for jail for a month there's gonna be a fine on you uh, and all of that now just simply vanished I don't have that anymore and I can just simply drink water whenever I choose even if it's Ramadan, I'm not getting punished for it. I know it's it's a great feeling, isn't it? Uh, what did you? What was your speech about at the foundation? What was the basis of your speech? What What were you trying to uh, tell people? I was trying to to tell people that even as small as they think um, censorship cases might be or uh, a sentence uh, for even just a, a sanction or a, I'm, what I mean as a fine for someone even if as small as it sounds it only builds up and builds up until it reaches to a state where they don't even have to read for example Orwell to know that uh, to have this fictional place where they can be or they can see how dictatorships work they can just look at the Middle East and see the authoritarian regimes see the theocrats and see how people live and they should learn from that to not and uh, to not allow any form of censorship even as uh, as bad as, as it sounds even if it's insulting even if it's the most hateful thing you can say if you start doing that, there's nothing that will stop you from, from censoring something that will actually bring goodness into the world and can actually bring a good dialogue that would result in benefits for society. So, uh, in, in the sense, are you talking about like the accusations of Islamophobia, for example? In, in the accusations of um, Islamophobia and any, um, any method that religion takes, to protect itself from criticism. So it's not, it doesn't necessarily have to be Islam, although it is the majority of the cases where it's, it's uh, about Islamophobia. But um, religion protects itself right now, not by the threat of force, although it does have it in other countries, but in countries where it doesn't have that, that force of, uh, that, where in countries where it doesn't have the capability of violence uh, they use they use the feel they use feeling the religious feelings and um, the they ask for respect although when con when religion has the actual control to dictate what should be done it doesn't ask for res re respect or request it it simply forces it mm -hmm. so you because you were talking about uh, in a sense uh, this is a type of underhanded blasphemy laws then when uh, uh, asking for censorship in order not to hurt feelings. Yeah, it, 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 because, because you cannot implement those laws who do exist in the East. You cannot implement them right now in the West. So you use the methods of, this, uh, of appearing as an oppressed uh, 
minority, although you are not a minority. You're not, you're not even people, because it's not Muslims that you're talking about. You're talking about an idea, you're talking about faith, you're talking about Islam, you're talking about a very bad idea, actually. So it, it, it appeals to the, to, to the notion that minorities are oppressed, but it's actually not genuine because most of our, or, or actually all of our discussions are about ideas, faiths, and how should people treat each other, and what, what is true and what is not. Nobody's mentioning people or attacking people. In fact, they do exist on another way, whole scale of the sp spectrum where people actually do engage in bigoted, hated acts, and those are not us but we are put with them just for the, for, for the fact that we're blaspheming a religion. Yeah. I mean, given the fact that you have this experience in Jordan and how difficult it is for Jordanian atheists, um, uh, so, you know, the, you, you told people at the conference, be careful, don't give up freedoms that you have because they're precious. Uh, explain that a bit more. Be uh, because uh, as I've read in history and I've seen on TV in previous interviews of, and speeches that presidents gave, there was a moment where religion could not control people. And there was a moment where the East relatively had similar aspects as the West. But the only difference was that they allowed people to be controlled. There was, it was okay for the selected few uh, of dictators to control societies. And that, re that n did not allow for any um, free discussion of ideas. So the bla uh, blasphemy laws still existed, all religious or otherwise. And for, but because of that, because people allowed it to be, that's what made it so easy for theocrats to come back and take control. And that's why I'm telling people in the West to be careful, because although you might see it as an as a irrelevant case, although you might see as censorship is okay if it's not about religion, all forms of censorship, even when it's not about religion, even when it's for a very bad idea, all forms of it engage and participate in building an environment that would resembles Jordan and would resemble Saudi Arabia at one point. So they should look at these countries, learn not to do the same. I mean, since we interviewed you last, you've uh, established the Council of Ex-Muslims of Jordan. Uh, tell us about that and how that was established what sort of issues uh, Jordanian atheists and ex-Muslims face? I've met with, uh, with a couple of my friends in Jordan before leaving, and I informed them of my decision. Mm -hmm. And we uh, planned on how we can benefit from this, that uh, I could be a face for them and speak for them. And we can have a website or a group or s a some platform that they can speak and give, uh, and give voice to them through me, and I can try to raise awareness of their cause and try to provide them with any support I can get. Uh, that, however, did not reach the, 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 did not reach what we hoped it will, but we're still working on it. And because of the situations that are now in Jordan, for example, we have bro Muslim Brotherhood MPs who are trying to block not just atheists or agnostics. There is, uh, uh, in the last week, we had uh, a, um, the gov a government shutdown for a, a convention that was supposedly going to discuss how to make relig how to change the religious thoughts and enlighten it. It wasn't even mentioning. Uh, any blasphemous content and it was shut down because of those MPs. We also had Halloween parties shut down because of those MPs. Mm -hmm. So the situation is a little bit difficult right now for them to communicate directly with me and that's what it's making it more difficult for us to do what we were planning to do. But of, of, of course there's a real need there for uh, Jordanian atheists and ex-Muslims to be able to speak out and um, it's something that eventually will be able to have uh, maybe a longer-term impact. Uh, 
it, we, we will eventually have to because as bad as ideas can be, just f for the sake of them being evil, will, it, they will crush at one point because people will start to realize the injustice that is happening. So I, will, I see it in the future, maybe not in our lifetime, maybe not a hundred years from now. But I do see a future where religion cannot control people's lives. And it might be something that's um, a personal relationship between, between individuals, not as a force to control the uh, societies and apostates mm -hmm. as a whole. What's your, your own plans for the future? Well, I'm assimilating until now. <laughs> it's been a few months, but it's uh, it's a cultural shock. It's a uh, it's a shock about everything. It's uh, you feel differently. It's everything's new around you. So I do. I'm uh, I, I am trying to to keep working on what we do, uh, but I still have to focus a little bit on myself. Um, and I do. That's a message that uh, a lot of ex-Muslims, especially in the, uh, who are still in Muslim-majority countries, have to know that things are uh, even if you do get out, and that's that. That is the most precious moment you can have in your life when you become free. But still, there's a long way ahead of you. It's a very difficult process, and it's a very difficult um, uh, beginning. There's a future in it, but you have to keep in mind that you will need the strength and power uh, to always just hold, hold your head high and just keep moving forward and keep working on yourself even after you leave because you'll need it. Mm -hmm. One last thing, you, you mentioned some, um, um, that you had to deal with some types of racism. How, how is that? What, what, how has that been for you? Uh, the first... In, in, uh, instance I, I had was the, the first time I left an airport in the country I was born in and uh, there were two ladies uh, passing by me and then they looked at me and they uh, I don't know if, if it's okay to say the F word but they were like fucking Arab uh, I was like, whoa, like, like I didn't have that even in the UK, like I, I didn't have that, but like this is supposedly our citizen here and Anyway, um, I did have moments of go back to Iraq. I did have uh, uh, moments where people would like, oh, Muhammad, you know, or like, oh, you're the second Muhammad I meet today, or like, oh, look at these, all of these foreigners who are here. Um, but uh, you, you just uh, build the tolerance for it, mm. you know. Uh, the, the most up upsetting moment for me was when I had a, a finally established uh, a friendship that I can call for, with someone as a best friend and then finally to, to realize that that friend uh, actually believe, believes that the 14th Amendment, for example, has to be repelled and that I, uh, it's, not within, it's not a right for me. It's not right for me that I do have my citizenship and that I was allowed to come back here and the exact word was there's a price that has to be paid for freedom and you didn't pay it you were just born here well, most probably you paid a lot more than they did probably <laughs> okay um so i suppose um there's there's the racism on the one hand and there's also uh, those who are progressive who uh, label you islamophobic you told me of a situation where uh, in California, a group had used a quote of yours and they were attacked as a result. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's quite difficult to be in a situation where you're getting it from all sides. Yeah. There was a, uh, I heard of this today that the, uh, a group of people had a pamphlet that has, uh, had a, they quoted me on that and they were distributing it in California. And then a, a group uh, of, uh, as they described as Antifa. Uh, came to them and they cr crushed the site that they have. They stole all of the equipments they had and they took away all of their pamphlet pamphlets, as uh, because they are accusing them of being Islamophobes. Mm -hmm. And uh, what they uh, they also described that uh, it was that pamphlet pamphlet that they felt was Islamophobic. So um, it's you don't know where to belong in an 
in, a, in this tribal environment of the West, of people on the right uh, not acknowledging you as one of them, and uh, I mean as a, as a part of the nation, and people on the left would not allow you to uh, express your thoughts if your thoughts are against their current agenda. Very difficult situation. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, do you have hopes that things will change for the better? I do, but I'm also scared that they might not because um, if it stays like this, it's not. It's it's nothing good. But uh, as uh, all, all, what I'm observing is that it's even getting worse and worse. I do hope so, but if if nothing is done to bring people back together and close this divide, uh, I actually am less hopeful about the future unless I see some form of action from people who are um, in uh, who are not concerned about this conflict as much as they're concerned about the unity of the values of the West. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.